Hey Smokey, do you want to see a 15 minute video on how to use 35mm film in the Mamiya 6MF camera? Well I don't care what you think, I'm doing it anyways. Hello, today I want to talk about loading 35mm film into the Mamiya 6MF medium format rangefinder camera. This little tutorial only applies to the MF version and not the regular Mamiya 6. So before I begin showing how to load a 35mm film into the Mamiya 6 MF, I just want to take a moment to let you know that I do have intentions of doing a more thorough review of actually shooting in the panoramic format in this camera, but I want to give it a fair shake beforehand so it might be months until I get there. We just entered the dark season where I leave work and it's night out so I don't get to shoot as much this time of year but the intention is to eventually get there I know myself well enough to know that intentions don't always do something's gonna happen I can be all hey cool 35 miller panoramic and then some other format comes by and whoosh I no longer pay attention to this for a couple months while I chase some other camera thing for a while so if that happens it'll happen but until then I'm gonna squeeze all the SEO out of this I can by just showing you how to load it because when I got the kit, I couldn't even find any instructions or tutorials on it. So if there is some nuanced thing I do wrong, it's because this is all for me using it and I didn't actually read instructions because I couldn't find them. Okay, back to actually loading this thing. So there are currently out there, a lot of people are making little adapters for loading 35 millimeter film into basically any medium format camera. But I'm gonna cover using the official panoramic adapter set from Mamiya. So this kit has one big advantage over the 3D printed cheap DIY thing, which is this camera is designed to actually rewind 35 millimeter film, which most medium format cameras do. So you have to shoot it and then put the camera into a dark bag or into a dark room to unload it. And it's annoying. You can't change it in the field, but this is designed so that you can rewind the film in the camera and keep shooting. The kit comes with four pieces inside of this magic black box. We've got piece one, piece two, piece three. I'll describe all these later when I actually use them. And piece four, the mask for framing the photo. Let's push these aside real quick and collapse the lens on our camera. I've already got the knob closed so that the curtain is shut inside so I don't drop anything on the lens. Obviously the first thing you want to do is open your camera up. <clears throat> and since if you've just got done shooting 120 film you want to pop out your old reel. You're not going to need it for shooting 35 millimeter in this camera. The first thing you're going to want to do is this dot on the film gate which is most likely lined up to 120 because at the time of recording this 220 is basically extinct. Maybe in the future, if you're lucky, it's back and you'll be shooting a lot of 220 in here. But until then, you need to make sure that this dot is rotated so it aligns with the 220 slash 135 side. And to do that, you just give it a little rotation. If you forget to do that, what's going to happen, I believe, I didn't actually test this, is that after you click the 12th exposure, it's going to think that there's still 120 format film in there. And it's just going to start advancing and no longer let you shoot photos. But set to the 220 slash 135, you can keep going and get about 20 exposures off of a roll of 35 millimeter film. So the next thing you want to do is take the, the film mask for this. You might be able to get away without using this if you want to have the film image extend to the borders of the film. But I'm an old school purist. I like my film rebates. Black is my coffee. So you just... Take it the side up, it'll read mum, mum, it'll read Mamiya Japan looking at you in the proper orientation. Backside has none of that. So you just uh, fold it in there and push it in. It just sits there. Wiggles a little bit, but not too much. The next piece I'm going to grab is this one that has these two arrows on it pointing. This is the, the take up reel for the 35 millimeter film. So as the take up reel, we're going to push the orange button so that this knob comes off. And then, as you can see, the, the keyhole side is gonna match up with the advanced keyholes up here. So we just slide that in there and then push the button back in to 
secured in place. So now the fun side, the, the film holder part apparatus thing, part number A or one, I'm gonna call it. So what you wanna do before putting this even in the camera is take your, grab my thing, let's take your film and it's gonna fold down on one side. So much like the film gate, you wanna orient it so it says Mamiya Japan looking up and take the, the bottom of the film roll and just fold this down so you can get the film in there. Just put it in, fold it down and rotate that until it locks in. And there you go, you got your film ready to be inserted into the camera. So now just like on the other side, we just make sure this is pushed so that the, the button is popped out. It's already out, I'll show you. So with the, the arrow pointing towards you, you put it in, you put the bottom in, and click it. There you go. We are damn near done here. So the next step, we just need to pull the, the film lead over. There's a, if you can see on the, the film gate, there are four little posts here, 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 and here. Those will help you know if you got the film all aligned properly. They'll sit within that when done correctly. We pull our lead over and into the take-up reel is a little slit. Can you get a good, good view of that? Very similar to many 35mm cameras. And then once it hooks, just... Oh, I lost the gate. Okay, put that back in place. So once it hooks, just give the advanced knobs some turns until it catches. You don't need to go very far. Because obviously, unlike 120 film, there's not an arrow to align it with, so I just go until it's caught. Push that back up. Make sure we're within our posts, and shut the camera. And now we just advance it until it stops advancing. There we go. We are now ready to shoot. Wait. Now we extend our lens and open up our dark slide if we've shut it. And we are ready to make some panoramic format film exposures within the Mamiya 6 MF. I'm gonna go shoot some film and we'll be right back and I'll show you how to use the final piece to unload that bad boy film. See ya. Okay, so once you reach the end of the roll, that's when this piece of the panoramic kit comes into play, the rewind knob. Before we put it on though, I gotta click my last exposure. See, here we are on number 20. Ready? Ooh. So, it, it's kind of weird on the last exposure because it's not like a 35 millimeter camera you see where it's just gonna let you keep cocking, it's just gonna bind up and if you forgot about this, it might feel like your camera's all busted up, but just roll it back in, we're cool. The adapter here fits on the bottom of the other side. I'm gonna push the lens in. So it connects the the bit the the screw goes into the tripod hole and the latch here goes under the the other um strug lap <laughs> strap lug. So we need to just get it in there, attach it, and rotate this until the slot falls into the slot on the rewind key. So the thing about this um, extra bit that people don't like is that it creates a lot of bulk and it takes up the strap lug. The, it takes up the strap lug over here. So if you're into having the strap go from here to here instead of here to here. You can't keep this on here while having the strap in that position. But the cool thing is, is that this device does not need to be on the camera while you're using it. You can only need to put it on to rewind the film. It also interferes a bit with the tripod hole. So if you're shooting off a tripod, it's a little awkwarder because you have to go into this thing. But like I said, it's optional while you're actually shooting the camera. Once you have it on, the button up here releases the film so you can rewind it. If you just start cranking now, it's going to bind up and you're going to feel like, oh no, something's wrong. But push this button. And now we can rewind our film. So let's see how long this takes rewinding it. Ready, set, go. Yeah. 
There, you can feel when it's done rewinding because it stops making the little grindy sound on this end and our film is rewound. So now just go back to the shutter and complete the advancement which will allow you to close the curtain inside the, the, the camera to unload the film. So now we just have to pop open our film back, push our button, and out, and out comes our film. So grab a Sharpie, label it if you're into that kind of stuff, M pan. And you're ready to reset the whole process and shoot another roll of panoramic film in your Mamiya 6MF camera. But first, let's see how painful it is to rewind the film without this. So here's our reline spot. You know, we could just slit a coin in there and crank for a while. Who knows how terrible it's going to be, which is we're going to find out right now. So I've got the, the standard lineup of American coins, the the, the absolutely useless penny, the tiny dime, the nickel, and the George Washington big boy. So in order, hey, it's not a treat. What the hell? Get, get, move, move. Okay. So obviously if you're watching this from a country that's not America, you might have to calibrate based on your own currency, such as with a Norwegian Krone or Krone, I believe. It's got a hole in it, so if you choke, you don't, if you swallow it and choke, you don't die. I also got a Canadian beaver and a Canadian loon. So let's see which one of these best fits into the hole. Let's, pennies. Throw these away. So the dime, the dime is a very loose fit. I don't, I don't think I'd trust that as my first choice. The American nickel actually sits pretty, pretty nice in there. I think that would be a, a, a reasonable choice for this operation. American Quarter. This is pretty well too. It's a little bit bigger so you get more grip. Maybe I think the nickel would probably be better. The Norwegian thing. That, that, that works. If you're in Norway, this could probably be a good coin to rewind your film with. Let's see, Canadian Beaver. Actually, about, about as well as the American Nickel. They're about the same size. And finally, the Canadian Loon, which actually fits really well and gives a nice big key to turn with. I think, I think I'm gonna do this for all my Canadian friends and rewind with the Canadian Loon. But I think also I need to do this standing up in a real world situation. So give me one second to rearrange my camera. Okay, so we just got done with a mad session of street photography and now it's time to unload our camera using the coin. I have no idea how long it's going to take, and it's probably going to be super annoying, but that's what we're here for, for science. All right, release the film, and let's go. Ah! That's no good. You can't drop your coin. What if it goes down a grate? Then it gets you. Stop making noise, I think we've hit the end. We have we have achieved bliss and gotten the the film totally rewound. So there we go, that's how annoying it is to rewind the film with a coin. So with the uh, authentic piece that comes with the panoramic kit for rewinding the film, it took me about 23 seconds. Using a coin, including the time that I dropped the coin, took a little under two minutes. So while the, the device is definitely easier and more fluid, probably not a big deal if you don't stick it on there all the time, like digging into my bag to find it and put it on, and if you're using both straps to undo it so you can hook the, the apparatus into there, it's probably more annoying than just grabbing a coin and going to town. Like I said, it's not as fluid, but it wasn't too much worse than using a knob rewind Leica, if you've ever done that, where you sit there and go, Eh, for like three minutes. So not a deal breaker if, if you don't like the knob thingy and the way it makes the camera handle. But other than that, that is how you load film for 35 millimeter into the Mamiya 6 MF using the Mamiya provided 35 millimeter kit.